Okay, today we're going to get into watching and reacting to Rainbow Six Siege Operation Twin Shells reveal panel. Now, I've seen a little bit of the leaks here and there, and I don't know what to expect, but uh, it'll probably be something. So let's get right up into it, man. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Operation Twin Shells. I'm Camille Salzar. Might as well make it 4K, why not? To straight from the developers themselves, all about Year 9, Season 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. This season brings an innovative new operator innovative. and a versatile new weapon. Let's kick it off with an overview of the season. Scopos, the wheelchair Lundin. operator. Alright, how is it going to be included? Year 9, Season 3 is all about Operation Twin Shells. But before we jump into that, it's really important that we acknowledge that we heard from you and we haven't met the expectations that you have okay. for Operation New Blood. And we want to reinforce that we are dedicated to this game and that we are putting more resources than ever into it. And you'll start to see that with Operation Twin Shells. Okay, so a lot's Operation changing Twin next Shells season. This is all about the new operator as well, Scopos. This is Kiri Galanos, who's one of the original operators from Rainbow Six. And she comes with two shells that she can control. How is this, this going to work, bro? a testament to the creativity of the <laughs> game and the talent of our team to come up with unique operators like this that are still game changers. Uh -huh. We're also introducing updates to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity, which is a major priority for us. Anti-cheat, the, the game, And we have more like the Siege Cup coming in beta oh this is gonna be so we fun balancing changes we have after action 2.0 oh what is this ui team lineup player recap okay so this is all work in progress right so we're, we're gonna be able to do like look at all this on the test server and whatnot uh breach work for hire okay so like all of this is just for badges i think right these are badges hit rates battle man. And loot roll chances they have different uh what like what is this is this for multiplayer team deathmatch like what like what does this show me team moltres sent gg y'all want to play again wait you can you can keep playing the same team oh that's probably just what this is coming online and we have so much more for Hold you. Up. We can't wait to dig into it. So let's begin. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's talk about an important topic right off the bat. Cheating and toxicity oh. are not just concerns for you. They are critical issues for us as well. To you better this, watch your words. We've structured our team to dedicate even more resources to oh. these challenges. Now, I don't want to hear that. Details and updates on the current and upcoming player protection. This is what they've been saying Here's every single season. And product owner Lancelot Sagey. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The ins and the outs. We want to assure you that we have more than just one security system in place. More than just battle eye. We have six detection systems. Oh, six. Am I going to have to restart my game six different times, dude? Am I going to have to restart my game six times before I can even play? And then, and then, then we can finally get rid of 2% of cheaters. I swear, at any bro. given time so that we can catch cheaters. And we're constantly improving these systems. On top of Okay, this, what, what is all this? Uh, botting, gameplay, QB. QB is so awful, man. Uh, the DDoS protection is good. Uh, Battle eye data bands. Okay, so I won't be finding uh 3.6 KDs after 400 games again because that happened to me eight games in a row, bro. I, I want them to do something about this. We want to talk about a pillar as well for our anti cheat, which is binary hardening. Binary hardening is the act of obfuscating and making it harder for cheat makers to access the game. Think of it like a giant library. Where uh -huh. a cheat maker is trying to find a specific book. For us, we'll be trying to change that book's location as much as possible. And even on top of that, changing the shelves and the entire library so that it's as confusing 
and as hard for a cheat maker as possible. This is kind so of confusing for end, me. They cannot effectively make cheats for our game. When it comes to Siege Cup, for those that have won and have cheated, they will be banned. But of uh -huh. course, their teammates will have access revoked from Siege Cup as well. Oh! Ensuring that competitive integrity remains in Siege. Another Yo, this is a W. It's time to ban. 75% of bans are happening 12 hours sooner now. And this is something Ooh. that we'll be working on in the future to reduce that time as much as possible. As you may have seen... Yo, okay, this is a big deal. Cheat, the team has grown in size. It's now a multidisciplinary team that is actually one of the largest in-house anti-cheat teams in the world for any given... But if it's the largest, why is stuff not getting done? Like, it, it, like you say all these grand things, but it's like every single season I'm running into more and more cheaters, dude. Like, uh, I can't I can't play the game. I, I got hit with cheaters eight games in a row last night, bro. Like, I, I can't. Uh, I, it just makes me not want to play ranked at all. I find them in standard and quick match as well. Like, I don't know how people are ranking up in this in this era of siege right now. It, it's so painful to play. It makes me lose my sanity. Project, and for us that means we're totally dedicated. To I hope sure so. Is the best Everyone's quitting range. I got eight-minute queues. Our mission is simple: ensuring a safe space for all players in Rainbow Six Siege. It means protecting the community from recurrent and highly toxic players, while rewarding recurrent positive behavior. Our mission includes handling features like... I don't, I don't think, I don't think the reputation system has helped a whole lot. I'm gonna turn on subtitles. I can understand them, I just wanna like, get read as well. I don't know. Censorship, reports, abandoned penalties, match cancellation, commendation system, and of course, the reputation system. I really hope, I really hope you do not get in trouble for canceling a game if you're running into a cheater, bro. Like, they need to make this to where it was five minutes again. I think I had the most fun playing Siege recently during that uh, during that circumstance to where it was five minutes every time you leave a game because I was running into so many cheaters that I had to constantly go through two different accounts, bro. Around three key principles. Uh, and that's the light end compared to most people. Most people have like five or six accounts whenever they, they get to a high rank so they can just keep playing. Uh, it, it's unreal. In its current state, the reputation system has some weaknesses and is not trusted by the community. Yeah. This is why, because it doesn't matter. Overhaul it. It means reviewing its structure, the action that are feeding it, and the in-game UI. It looks confusing. And to be clear, a single negative action will have a minimal impact on you. Only the but multiple, yes. Okay. Thank God, dude. Okay, we now it makes to sense. Give you access to those changes in Yana in S4. The system will remain in beta. It means no impact on standing until we are 100% confident it meets your and our okay. standards of transparency, understandability, and clarity. Additionally, we are working like on some very impactful features that we cannot wait to share with you by the end of the year. When you finish a match in Operation Twin Shells, things are going to have a brand new look. Please welcome to uh, the here we go. Uh, this buggy mess that we saw. The new post action report. Plus, game director Joshua Mills is here to talk about boosting the abilities of your drones. Drone abilities? In new season, we are introducing post action report in a completely new dimension. Instead of operator cards, there will be a new screen with teammates. Oh my god, you can finally show off your outfits instead of just your cards. Oh my god. Oh wow. Just what we wanted. Operators located on the same map they just played. This is a W though. Can command teammates and the opponents on the next screen. Instead of sequence of separated tabs, all progression like okay. playing, clearance, battle pass, also including challenges. I like this. Time will be comfortably organized on a single page layout that highlights you don't have to shift through 10 different menus information i'm so excited with this update i can't wait yeah, that's our that's good news try it out and share their feedback with us drone boost is a new feature coming to our attacker lineup the goal here is to continue to reinforce our attackers make sure they have the tools to get the job done 
Intel is king in Drone Siege, and keeping boost. your drone alive is crucial to getting that intel. Some of the changes we did to Solus helped with that, but we wanted to go further. We want to give more- Zoom lines! Specifically that time. Oh, so W! You, you can actually boost your drone a maximum of three times, three seconds per you boost. You can Oryx dash with your drone! To quickly evade, quickly- Wait, wait, what was that? Cancel it mid- What is this? To quickly well, that's a new operator. Close distances and each boost once expended takes six seconds to recharge. So the boost resource this is, cool. is actually kind of similar to Maverick's torch in the sense yeah. that you can cancel the action at any time and it doesn't fully deplete the boost. So you can cut up a boost as needed. Okay. Again, you'll only have three full ones. Drone boost isn't limited to just the default drone. The clutches from Bravo or even Twitch drones, drones can yeah. also take advantage of this feature. Hmm. If Mozzie happens to get his hands on one of these Ooh, drones, Echo. And there's still charges left. So that's the key factor here. If there's still charges, that's that pretty drone, nice. Now they're Mozzie's to use. So the future of drones and why does that look so is blue? Really focused on their economy, which means making sure they can survive longer, or at least giving our players the ability and the tools they need in order to make sure their drones can survive longer. They should be used more regularly in the middle and late game of the rounds. And we want to make sure that you have those tools in your arsenal to be able to make things happen. Okay. I like that. that that's a cool change. I didn't expect it. This next update is for you. The new Siege oh, here we go, here we go. is coming this season for select players to test their five stacks in intense yes. tournament play. A new reward system you get a is coming tournament well rank? both Siege Cup and ranked matches. Plus, a few more interesting updates that live content director Christopher Budgeon is going to tell you all about. I hope, there's, uh, I hope there's a rank system for the tournaments. In Year 9 Season 3, Operation Twin Shells, we're happy to announce the beta of Siege Cup. We made the decision to restrict Siege Cup beta to the PC platform okay, because that makes we sense. can be much more reactive. If something happens with the Siege Cup, yeah. we can address it much Can't do that on console than with other platforms. We really want to launch Siege Cup in its full form in Year 9 Season 4. Competitive integrity is imperative for Siege. Yeah. That's why having a beta... So the game's base around. Register the squads, formulate the brackets, distribute the rewards. We have to get it right. To register your team for the Siege Cup beta, follow the QR code or the link that you see on the screen and get ready for news about the first Siege Cup coming your way. Okay. With Siege Cup, you have to register as a five stack, meaning that you have to bring four of your friends Get yeah. ready to compete until the tournament is over. Once the Siege Cup starts, you're there, committed to the Siege Cup, to play until you get eliminated Damn. or, of course, win the tournament. We see the Siege Cup beta as our most competitive playlist, even more so than ranked, because the stakes are extremely high. The first Siege Cup will be near the beginning of year 9. What do you mean, stakes? And after the finish of the first tournament, we'll run another every two weeks for the remainder of year nine season competitive three. coins in year nine season three we're introducing a new currency called competitive coins competitive coins are exclusive to our competitive playlist that being ranked and siege cup get oh. as far as you can within the ranks as well as play as many siege cups as you can to get competitive coins to oh. open these in year nine season three all console players will receive one free competitive pack Move up the ranks, get as many competitive coins as you can, so you can continue to open packs in that collection. Ooh, new packs! Starting in year nine, season three, when you're waiting for your next match, yeah, I rank, saw this. This is cool. Match, or even the Siege Cup, you'll be able to enter the shooting range to stay warmed up, ready for your next match. Additionally, we've also added cool. a cover feature within the aiming lane. Now you can have covers pop up from the ground. Dummies will hide behind them and take position as you try to uh, a little funky as you warm up your aim both pc and console players will be able to enter the shooting range during matchmaking 1v1s have become more popular within the season, yeah and that's why we've now added a 1v1 this is cool i like this in custom game there are two presets for 1v1s in custom game short and long the short mm. preset allows you to play six rounds with four rounds to win and one overtime round. Any the specific long, maps preset, or? It's the first to eight rounds, but if the match gets tense and it's really tight, there are three overtime rounds. And both of the 1v1 presets, all maps no, are available. Oh, okay, okay. The prep phase has been lowered to 20 seconds. It's perfect for one player to get set up and ready for the attack. Right, the that's cool, I like that. The featured game mode in both 1v1 presets. Roll swap every round. You play attack, 
then defends. This will continue until whoever finally wins the match. Hmm. With every new season, the question arises, which operators will be targeted for balancing? Oh, here we go, here we go. They change. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen with Solus and Dokubi? What's gonna happen? Designer David Perpignan has all the answers, plus spoilers, it's Solus, Dokubi, and Nook. Okay. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, Nook? What is she getting nerfed for? What? Or is she getting buffed? Can she finally walk through gadgets now? Oh, man. We are implementing the second round of changes for Solis. We yeah. Know that our previous package was uh, a bit no, it wasn't, bro. Monitoring data uh, just to see that everything went well. What we've seen is a decrease in ban rate and also in presence, but a steady trend on win rate. This new wave of changes for Solis is based in three pillars. The first pillar is the detection mechanic. Now Solis will use only the center of the screen to detect the gadgets, and those gadgets will be unidentified. You won't know what they are. Okay. The second pillar is the scanning or identification mechanic. Now we call it overclock, and once you trigger the overclock, your energy is refilled, and you will be able to see every gadget in the center of the screen as identified. Uh, you, okay, you that's pretty cool. Aside from that, Solis will emit a warning to every observation tool in the enemy team within the range of detection. So they will know that you are overclocking and that you are seeing their gadgets. The third pillar is the energy access. Now Solis spec IO will last longer and will require less energy to be activated while reloading. Also, these new changes give us more okay. levers that will help us adjust Solis in the future. Doc Ivy right now can generate a lot of pressures. Yes, the yes, yes. Specifically at the beginning of the round. That's why we're taking a look to the resource management in her ability. Now, Doka will start with zero Ooh. charges at the beginning of the round and will get one every 45 seconds, but only up to two per round. These changes should reduce the pressure on defenders now. They should have more time to prepare their setup. And Doka Ivy, players will be encouraged to survive longer to have a greater impact in the match. Global abilities of okay. Doka Ivy's Logic Bomb have a great impact in the game, and sometimes with little effort from the players. We are aware of this, and we will take a look at it in the future, being part of bigger changes for the game. See you around. So, Nock is receiving a buff. We think that camera oh, okay, okay. and intel deception is how stealth should look in Rainbow, and that's what Nock does. The changes we are making are affecting how Nock's ability consumes energy. Instead of being time-based, they will be action-based. That means that some actions like walking won't consume any of your energy, but Ooh. if you sprint or shoot, your energy will be consumed. These changes aim to make Nock more patient. We want Nock to be better at flank watching. Yeah, yeah, I like this. And increasing the uncertainty Yo, on the shield. We want them to feel like there's a monster in the house. Nock and Smoke's FMG9 is getting above. We are reviewing its recoil to make it more comfortable when you're shooting at longer distances, specifically what? when you're using magnified scopes. The objective of these changes is to improve the player perception and balance of those operators while keeping the frustrations away. There will be more changes in this season. For wait, example, wait, wait. So her gun's just going to be better? Like, who uses the FMG on, on smoke, bro? Let, let's be real. You use a shotgun and SMG combo, okay? You don't use smoke's main gun. His main gun is the shotgun, okay? But on Nook, or Nook, they're making it have less recoil? Hmm. That could be interesting, though. And and slower paced. I still want her to be able to walk through a proxy, bro. Look at the proximity alarm and its synergy with Sentry, and also at the delay timer for explosions on the Claymore. Wait, 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 okay. wait, 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 wait. For example, we're taking a look at the proximity alarm and its synergy keeping the frustrations away. There will be more changes in this season. Oh, yo! Look at the proximity alarm and its synergy with Sentry, and also at the delay timer for explosions on the Claymore. I like that. A big update for Versus AI is coming in Operation Twin Shells. As you'll now be able to play as a defender and face off against a squad of attacker bots. For more, here's AI programmer Ariane Moncha Dele. So they're bringing Marley in, in for this? That's gonna be interesting. Versus AI is a game mode designed for new players to provide them with a safe environment where they can learn and practice before their first ranked experience. They're adding a uh, in year defender. In Season 4, we introduced Versus AI for the first time. 
Since then, we keep adding more operators to play with and against, more support and maps, and we keep integrating more AI behaviors. This you can get some funny seen, content. We're introducing Versus AI 2.0. Given that Siege is an asymmetrical game, we want to give the players the opportunity to play the other side. All right, I, I like this. This time, players are going to be able to play the defenders against a full team of AI attackers. The AI attacker team will feature five operators, Ash, Thatcher, Termite, Nomad, and Sledge. As a defender, the player will oh, be typical able lineup. to I like 16 that. operators, including the new one, Scopos. New players are going to have the opportunity to learn how to react to those attackers' behaviors, but it will also give them some ideas of how to play yeah, themselves that's pretty cool. when it's their turn to play the attackers. Well, I actually Both beginner made and shields? advanced game mode are going to offer the full match experience at launch. Similar to a casual game, the player is going to enter as either a defender or an attacker against a full team of AIs. They're going to play on one of our eight supported maps, and after two rounds, they're going to switch sides. We've heard your feedback, and we want <laughs> yeah. to make sure that Who are AI these AI gives a real feel of what it's like to play Siege. Uh huh. It's now time oh, here it is, here to is, here talk is, here about is, uh... the new operator. Yo! This Greek defender brings a new dimension of tactical possibilities yes. to the fight through her twin shells. Talos and Colossus. For insight into the visual design of this operator, we'll hear from our director. <laughs> Thank God, Jordan. I want to know what they were and thinking when they were the cooking this up. Opportunities she offers. We'll go to game designer <laughs> Justin Laranje Alualia. Yeah, let us know what your thought process was. What the hell is this? What the hell Scopus is that? Is from Raven Shield era, and her name is Coris uh, Galanos. Her visual uh, design is really based off of her um, story background um, and the trauma that she went through. In oh, the here comes the trauma dump! From the year nine, season one. In the mission, uh, there was Daniel Bogard and uh, Jared Morris at that time trying to stop the bomb maker. In the end, you uh, see a giant explosion and it was actually exactly that moment where she stopped being able to walk. Ever since then, she's a wheelchair user. She's been in a relentless chase trying to seek prosecution to stop Deimos. All that toll took a effect on her face. She looks very gaunt. She has eye bags, wrinkles, and wear and tear. Scopos is a master strategist. Uh, she adapted her wheelchair into her command center like a pilot seat. She uses the shell uh -huh. to be part of the action. In game, you can hear her, you can see her face when you swap between the two shells. When we're designing her uh, wheelchair and the robot, oh, this is gonna be freaky. Mind to make sure that she feels very grounded. So we went uh, with analog, old technology look. We really want to establish the fact that it's not smart AI robots. They're not invincible. They can be destroyed. Uh, when she loses Talos, Colossus, she's losing a part of her again. So for the design of the robots, um, we wanted to differentiate the two so you can identify them easily on the field. The difference are in the antennas, the shoulder pads, and colors and patterns are distinct to one another. We made sure to have the analog look by physically having buttons that you can push. They're, they're wires that you can see and they're not touch screens, they're not holograms, they are something that you can touch and feel. Back when she was a field agent, Kyure surveyed the area from afar as a sniper. Now, she still watches from a distance, but in a different way. Thanks to her new tech, Scopos is able to maintain a wide network of control unlike any other defender. That's because what Scopos brings to the field is not one, but two remotely controlled robotic operators. These oh, that's freaky. Talos and Colossus make up the V10 Pantheon system. At any given moment, one of Scopos' shells will be in an active state where it functions like an operator, while the other okay. remains in an idle state where it functions like a powerful piece of defensive utility. Scopos' control allows her to swap the states of these shells, quickly delivering offensive or defensive power where it's needed most. Scopos' active shell works much like any other operator. Oh, what is, it, what is this gun? And use gadgets. It's also Yo, Scopos what is that gun? Lifeline. If a shell is destroyed while it's active, Curie's link is severed, and she's functionally dead for the rest of the round. Two bodies does not mean two lives. Meanwhile, Scopos' idle shell will take on a defensive posture, deploying an integrated mm. shield that functions much like a deployable shield secondary gadget. While in this state, 
The idol shell can be used as an observation tool by Kyrie and her oh, allies. Oh, interesting. Additionally, Scopos can access her idol shell's camera directly at any time with the gadget button. While Scopos is looking through her idol shell's camera, she'll have the option to swap shells. Activating the swap sequence will put her active shell into idle mode and put her idle shell into active mode. Okay. The only catch is that the active shell needs to be in a position where it can deploy its shield to perform the swap. Scopos's HUD has an indicator that'll make this easier. Yo. In fact, Scopos imagine HUD the glitch spots. Useful information about both shells, including whether the idle shell is under attack. Because you can vault over this. Affected by an EMP. Scopos is a very tactically oriented operator that requires players to collect data and quickly act on it to maximize her. Uh -huh. A strong Scopos player is one that makes frequent use of her idle shell to guide the actions of her active shell. For most players, Scopos will likely be a shallow roamer operating near the bomb yeah. while having the means to extend into a deeper roam or fall back and anchor as needed. If used strategically, she has the power to be one of the most mobile operators in the game. Scopos's idle shell can be a Oh wait, this is a pretty cool device. idea though. Having the combined properties of a deployable shield and a bulletproof camera, this shield can offer a large amount of intel from relative safety. Scopos's idle shell is most effective. Why well, I don't need to see her face, bro. The like defenders to hold so that it can provide information and serve as a launching point for when the enemy least expects it. Tano's coming out. Nah, that thing Scopus takes so long. A brand new gun to siege, the PCX-33 assault rifle. Okay. Kyure may not be bringing a sniper rifle into battle, but make no mistake. Her shells okay, are thank God. serious firepower. Two speed. This weapon is precise, deadly, and heavily customizable. She got NOS on that wheelchair, bro? Versatile defender. For a sidearm, Scopos carries a P229, a throwback to Curie's days in the Greek Special Forces. Scopos also has access to secondary gadgets. These are shared between her two shells. Her first option is impact grenades, a great choice to maximize her mobility and roaming potential. Alternatively, Scopos can bring proximity alarms. These synergize great with her idle shell, helping her know exactly the right time to take Ooh, action. Ooh, okay. The Pantheon shells are two health, two speed operators. Uh, yo, Sledge? They've been built for a balance between durability and mobility. Given their unique nature, Scopos' shells have a few special interactions. A good rule of thumb is to think of her active shell as an operator and her idle shell as a gadget. Yeah. The first interaction you might wonder about is EMPs and gadgets that target electronic devices, like IQ. While Scopos' shells are electronic, the active shell has an active countermeasure that protects it from anti-electronic effects. Mm. It won't completely stop them, but it will prevent Scopos' active shell from being fully disabled by an EMP. This protection doesn't extend to the idle shell, however. Disabling effects will prevent Scopos from using the camera and swap features. Scopos' greatest okay. fear is Dokubi. The hacker's calls are a threat to any roamer, but they also block Scopos' strongest escape plan. Additionally, Dokubi's universal hack can give her team access to the idle shell's camera. Robin's clutch drone can overheat Scopos' idle shell. However, this takes a while and gives Kyure a warning on her HUD. If she's fast enough, Scopos can swap to activate her countermeasures and prevent the overheat. In addition oh my to the gadget, Scopos' idle shell's shield can be destroyed with explosives and similar effects, leaving the idle shell exposed for an easy kill. The glass can also be shattered, preventing allies from fully benefiting from its utility. Okay. A well-placed ash charge, frag grenade, or fluorus drone can make quick work of an undefended idle shell. The biggest threats to Scopos are her direct counters, so she benefits greatly from allies who protect her from them. Catchers like Jaeger and Wamai can protect her idle shell from explosives, and other denial gadgets like those from Mute, Mozzie, and Tubrow can stop many of Scopos' greatest enemies. Mm. Being made of metal, Scopos' shells can't benefit from healing effects. Doc's stims, Thunderbird's Kona stations, and Rook's armor won't help the shells. They also can't get put in a down state, and they don't breathe, meaning they're immune to toxic effects like smoke and Fenrir. That last fact can open the floor to some aggressive combos. Wait, 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 hold on. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Uh, I didn't hear it. Doc Stims, Thunderbird's Conus, and enemies. Being made of metal, Scopos' shells can't benefit from healing effects. Doc Stims, Thunderbird's Kona stations, and Rook's armor won't help the shells. They also can't get put in a down state, Ooh. and they don't breathe, 
meaning they're immune to toxic effects like smoke and Fenrir. Yo, and this is sick. Open the floor to some aggressive combos. Yeah. Uh, the only the other operator that, you know, doesn't get hit by smoke. Hotel. Maestro, Valkyrie, and Echo can offer more insight into enemy positions and even provide some distractions. That can be more than enough to let Scopos get into position and go for the kill. Doke? Scopos is designed to embody the key aspects of being a defender. Gathering information and swiftly responding to attacker strategies. Scopos brings a level of adaptability that, if left unchecked, can turn the tide on even yeah, the strongest attacks. Yeah, that's crazy. She we'll seems pretty balanced, though. In the test server and throughout the season to see what players can do with her. Interesting. You won't see his face ever, but you'll probably recognize his voice as he's a big part of the Siege community. Yeah, Marley. It's Marley, and he's here to give you his own special brand of insight into the new operator. New yeah, how how does he think about the balancing? All that Operation Twin Shells has to offer. First impression of the new operator was definitely, oh, they've broken the game. This is it. But then when you see how it actually plays, it's amazing. It's mind blowing. And it's definitely the most versatile operator on defense. The new weapon she's got is uh, <laughs> another assault rifle on defense. I love it. I love that weapon. The best strategy that I've found with the new operator so far is definitely finding my typical mirror window hiding spots on defense and planting one of the shells in the corner and hoping everybody walks right past it and then switching to the shell when needs be and uh, yeah the rest is the rest is history during the playtest okay. the hardest counter that i noticed definitely feel like flores drones are a big issue if you're leaving your a body somewhere it's gonna get destroyed the balancing changes this mm. season have got me really excited. The changes to Nock are really exciting. I'm going to be playing her completely differently to how I used to. I'm going to be sitting under cameras and uh, yeah, really exciting. And I'm glad to see yeah, I like that change as well. I think that's a great change. Now you'll know when there's a Solace below when you're droning. And I think that's amazing. Are the Siege Cups going to be another level? So ranked is sweaty and fun and competitive. But Siege Cup is going to bring a whole new level of sweat. Yo, this is a W season, man. I can't wait for who will I want to challenge in the 1v1 custom match? <laughs> what a silly question. Jinxie, I'm ready. Overall, I think it's a really refreshing and exciting season. Year 9 Season 3 is bringing what I think is one of the most exciting operators I've seen in a long time. I can't it was definitely questionable, but... Coming from people. And I just think overall, alongside the balancing changes, it's just going to be a great season and I can't wait for it to launch. And that's the full rundown for Operation Twin Shells, which is hitting the season test server tomorrow. Jump in and see how Scopus, Talus, and Colossus change the way you defend a site. And as always, remember to report issues you encounter while playing to R6 Fix for a chance to earn a tidy reward for your efforts. I want to see what these now, packs have to offer, though. Don't leave just yet, because we've got one more thing for you. It's Jaeger in space! What? Uh huh. What the hell is this? Is this a, a new elite, bro? <laughs> Yo. Yo, overall, this is kind of a W season, man. I'm kind of hyped for it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what seasonal event they're going to do next week. September 10. Yeah, I'll definitely have to give it a try. Oh, this season looking crazy, dude. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully the cheater situation. Hopefully the cheater situation gets changed, man. Like, I want to play. I really do. Um, But I just, I can't. I can't. Uh, But we'll see. We'll see. 
uh thank you so much for watching if you liked it make sure to drop a sub and a like on the video it helps the algorithm push my content out uh much love to you guys and i hope to uh see you during one of my daily live streams man 6 p.m central uh time zone and i'll catch you on the next one much love guys